Do you need insurance if you have an LLC? Yes. Oh my God, yes. I don't understand these people that give this terrible advice. Whoa, Shreya, <laughs> tease the video a little bit. <laughs> people are already going to have tuned out. Are they, though? Or will they be brought in by my passionate response? You gave them the answer, though. <laughs> They're done. That's okay. Oh, I don't have my smart glasses. Anyway, um, that was a question Shreya Lay here received today while talking to a business owner. Yeah. Tell the story about this, you know, anonymize it and stuff. A business owner called me. They are, they have been in business for a while. They started out as a, oh my gosh, you're so much smarter already. Keep going. <laughs> they um, started out as a sole proprietor and then they switched to an LLC, as is the progression of a lot of businesses. And when they did that, they have a business mentor or maybe mentors, somebody gave them advice, somebody they trust, gave them advice that they could just drop their business insurance now that they had an LLC because LLCs will protect you no matter what and you don't need insurance anymore. And I panicked a little bit inside and tried to stop myself from um, forcefully saying like, no, that's all false. This is all wrong. And um, instead I told a story to help <laughs> them see the error of their ways. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's, let's throw it down a little bit. Sure. Why would you not want to do that? And don't want to put you on the spot. I know the answers if you want me to tell them. Oh, yeah. Why don't you weigh in? I mean, well, lay. well, first of all, insurance for protecting any asset, your business, your personal assets, whatever, insurance should be your first stop because it's yeah. typically the cheapest form of protecting yourself. And one of the greatest benefits of having insurance is having the insurance uh, attorney team on yes. your side. So if this sole proprietor turned LLC owner gets in some sort of legal trouble, hopefully it's a claim that's covered under the policy and their, and their attorneys will help to defend the business owner. They'll roll in there and be like, no, yeah, you guys are wrong. So that the business owner doesn't have to shell out a $30,000 retainer exactly. to a litigator. Yeah. Litig and litigator, whatever. I was saying litigation alligator? and then litigator. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, and <laughs> 30000 that's cheap. The average lawsuit, I think, is somewhere between like fifty and and $100,000. Yeah. So you don't want that covered under your insurance? Well, and didn't we speak... Well, I was reading... Never mind about speaking to someone. I was reading Bad Blood, and they were talking about how this lawsuit cost the defendants like two million dollars oh, to yeah. defend themselves yeah it's ridiculous yeah very expensive the other thing is so i imagine what this advisor was thinking of is that oh the llc gets sued and then it just gets kind of stuck there inside the llc and nobody <clears throat> excuse me and nobody then has to pay the judgment or the liability that comes up but if that were the sake... Who the attorneys? <laughs> Conspiracy theory? No. <laughs> no. no but... You still have to hire an attorney to defend yourself from the... Yeah, costs. yeah, that's yeah. step one. But then, um, so if there's a judgment against you and you, and you had no insurance, they're going to come to the LLC and look to take the assets of the LLC to cover the judgment since there's no insurance. But say there aren't sufficient assets in the business, in the LLC, then that creditor is just gonna pop right through that LLC and come after you personally. Then they're coming to take your home, they're taking your money, they're taking your car. You're gonna be driving around a $3,000 Honda Civic or maybe a 1992 <laughs> Ford, Ford, Escort. Ford Escort, which is nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> 33 miles per gallon, classic. Um, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> But, you know, I think that So is that worth the risk? I mean, it's tempting to get a 1992 Ford Escort, but 
it's probably a lot easier to just have your business liability insurance. When Colin, as an aside, suggested that I buy myself a 1992 Ford Escort not that long ago, I turned to him and I said, why don't you drive that car? Yeah, and this is a correction. It's actually 1990 Escort. That's the one you want. 92, it gets all weird. 90 is nice and boxy, uh, beautiful <laughs> colors, wonderful interior. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. So, anyway, what were we talking about? Yeah. Oh, um, you still need insurance. Yeah. Don't ditch your liability insurance when you go from being a sole proprietor to an LLC owner. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a poor decision, I think. Yeah. I would say that it's an ill-informed decision. And hmm. then, once you're ready to level up even further and you got those personal assets that you want to protect from your business... Asset protection, bro. Is that going to be our catchphrase? <laughs> Asset protection, bro. <laughs> anyway, if you found this helpful, maybe you know a sole proprietor who turned LLC owner. If so, maybe share this video. Give it a like. Comment below. Mm -hmm. Do one of those things, and we would really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.